YDNA testing can be a really powerful addition to your family history research. YDNA traces only that direct male line, and it's pretty easy to interpret and understand once you know how to get around that DNA match page. So that's what we're going to do today is talk about your YDNA match page and focus on just the parts you need to know. So I'm Diane Southerd, your DNA guide. Let's get started. All right. So when you're testing your Y DNA, it means you're investigating only that direct male line. So that direct male line is your father's 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 father. So just take one minute and think about who is that person? Who is that man that exists at the end of that line that you're trying to research? This Y DNA test, it's all about him. Now, don't neglect other males in your pedigree chart because really the Y DNA can help you investigate any man in your pedigree chart. The key is just finding the right person to be tested. So if you're interested, for example, in this ancestor, Mr. Williams, then the person who takes the test should also be a Mr. Williams. Now this is, of course, as long as you live in a society where that surname is passed down at every generation in the way we're talking about. But what you're looking for is a living person today who has the same Y DNA as the person you want to research. Your Y DNA can do these three things. First of all, it can distinguish between different paternal lines with the same surname. So if you have people in your, in your pedigree chart, maybe you're, you're a Miller or a Smith or a Jones or a Johnson, this Y DNA can effectively split out your particular group of ancestors from among all of the other people that share your surname. Likewise, perhaps you have a surname that's often misspelled or it's spelled differently, but you don't know if you're related to these people are not. Your Y DNA can quickly and effectively group together surnames that might be spelled or sound a little bit different. And lastly, it can sometimes help you figure out exactly how you're related to someone else, but not that often, and that's going to be a topic for a different video. So what is it about the Y DNA that makes this game-changing technology possible? Well, it really just is this. This is your Y DNA profile. It's just a list of numbers, a set of locations that's been tested on your Y DNA. What we're really looking for, though, is a match. And I want you to think of your Y DNA profile as stripes on a sock. And what we're looking for in a match is another sock that looks just like yours. So perhaps you can think about it like at the testing company when your sample comes in, they're throwing it in the dryer with all of the other socks and they're tumbling it around. Does that make you just a little bit nervous? Right, because what happens to socks when you put them in the dryer? We don't know. This is one of life's greatest mysteries. We don't know what happens to these socks when they go into the dryer and they come out without their pair. So as they're hanging the socks on the line at the testing company, you may find that you don't have any matches. And that's okay because we understand that given enough time, most people will find a match in the database. But when they're trying to figure out if you do or don't have a match, all they're doing is comparing the stripes. They're trying to decide if your set of stripes matches another person's set of stripes. If you want to look at this match page for yourself, you'll go to that dashboard at Family Tree DNA and you click right there on matches. That will bring up your match page, which admittedly contains a lot of information, but really you can distill the information you need to know down to this one column. This column, genetic distance, is the most important column in your DNA test results. You want this number to be three or fewer if you've tested at 37 or 67 DNA markers. If you've tested at 111, you could probably go up to five differences. But really, this just ensures that you could find a recent common ancestor with your DNA match. One way to double check how closely you might be related to someone else is to tip on, click on that little orange button called the tip calculator. That tip calculator brings up this statistical calculation that says, for example, it's 71% likely that you should share a common ancestor with this person at or before six generations. And just like that, you kind of have a roadmap. You need to push your genealogy out to six generations. Your match needs to push their genealogy out to six generations. And then you should start looking around for your common ancestor. So look at that tip calculator. It really does give you a good guide about whether or not this match is going to be worth your time. 
In addition to the tip calculator, I wanna make sure that you're looking at a couple of other things here in the match page. So you can see at the match page right now here at the top, we've tested at 67 total markers. So when you've tested at 67 markers, a lot of people are wondering, do I need to test at 111? Is that going to help? One thing you wanna to do to help you figure that out is check right here and you can see that this match has tested at 111 markers, which means it might be valuable for you to do the same so you can get a better comparison of how well you match at that higher level of testing. But if no one else has tested at a higher level than you have, there's no point in you testing at that higher level because there won't be anyone to compare with. So one good way to think about if you need more or not is to think about your DNA match being related to you within a window of relationship. So if you've only tested 37 markers, you can think about your window of relationship like that big bay window in your front room, right? You could be related between maybe two generations back and 10. It's this very wide, broad range in which you might be able to find your common ancestor. If you upgrade to 67 markers and you're still pretty closely related, that's like shrinking that window of relationship down to maybe your bedroom window. It's still a nice big window, maybe from four to eight generations, but it's certainly smaller than that 37 marker window. If you really want to know how and when you're related to someone else, testing at 111 can be very helpful. That 111 marker set is like that bathroom window. It's that small little portal that only gives you a slight idea of when you should be looking for your common ancestor. So that's a good guide too, depending on what you want to know about your relationship is how many markers you need to have tested. Additionally, you can see if a match has taken the family finder test, and you see that right here in this FF. FF means family finder, which is the autosomal DNA test at family tree DNA. If someone's taken an autosomal DNA test, you can go look for this match on your autosomal DNA match page. If they're not there, it likely means you're related to them more distantly than fourth cousins. If they are on your autosomal DNA match list, your autosomal DNA will give you a much better idea of when you should be looking for your common ancestor. For example, it may say your second cousins, in which case you'll know more about how to look for your relationship. So what should you do next with your Y-DNA test? Focus on that genetic distance column. Only pay attention to matches who are matching you with a zero, one, two, or three level of genetic distance. But use that tip calculator. Find out for yourself how far back should you be going before you and your match could find a common ancestor. And last, upgrade if you have matches who, match, who have had a higher level of testing completed. I really think it's going to help you figure out your relationship if you're tested at the highest level that your matches are also tested at. So go for it, give it a try. I think the Y-DNA is very powerful and it has the potential to really impact your family history research. Plus, of course, I wanna hear how it's going. So leave me a comment, let me know, is Y-DNA working for you? And until next time, I'm Diane Southerd, your DNA guide.